Matt Dudney is the son of Barbara Mandrell. From a very early age, Matt was exposed to an opulent celebrity lifestyle. Money, tours, and famous people were everyday life for him. Even though he accepted Christ at the age of 15, Matt slid into an unruly lifestyle just a few years later. I started out with, you know, just with a group of friends of, of oh, hey, we got a six pack of beer, or, or uh, uh, let's go chase these girls. And I dabbled a little bit in drugs, um, but more than anything, I, it, it was more drinking. Um, the uh, later came depression. Um, it, it started sometime while I was in college. The more and more I fell into depression, the more I would self-medicate using alcohol and sometimes drugs. And, and from that, I, there was no balance. It was uh, little short highs and then long periods of time with lows. Matt began taking antidepressants for the depression, but he didn't stop consuming alcohol. I, I was drinking from the t almost from the time I got up in the morning um, and, until I'd pass out at night. And I'd, I wouldn't fall asleep, I'd pass out. The depression got so bad for me that, I mean, I would lay in bed for days and, and, um, and only get up out of bed to, to, to go to the restroom or occasionally go get something to eat. The shame that I felt was more shame of a sense of uh, failure or loss of control. Um, you know, I'm, I'm no longer in control of feeling happy. I'm no longer in control of whether I can have that drink or not have that drink. Matt realized he needed help when he almost burned down his aunt's house. I put on a pot of dry beans and put water in it. And the next thing I know, the fire department was there and uh, people were running around. The, uh, the beans had run, the water had run out of the beans. And, and I guess the smoke alarms all went off and it smoked up the house pretty good. And, and I didn't know what I had done. I, don't, I didn't even remember putting on the beans. Matt checked himself into a rehabilitation center immediately. For some reason, he packed his Bible. I thought to myself, you know, I should really take my Bible. And, I, and then I even questioned myself, why should I take my Bible? After three days at the treatment center, Matt picked up his Bible. And I just started reading the 12th chapter of Proverbs. At that point, I knew it was the Holy Spirit or God or, or just speaking to me saying, are you through yet? And now I'm speaking out loud in a room by myself. And I, and I was like, what? And they said, are you through yet? Are you ready? And when I heard, are you ready? I just I kind of let it all go. And I said, yes, I'm ready. And that was the major turning point in my life to accept that I am a child of God. I was made to follow his will. And I was made for much, much bigger and better things than I was allowing myself to receive. Matt completed his treatment and returned to his job as a chef. For the first time, he wasn't tempted by the lifestyle around him, nor by the alcohol which flowed at the restaurant's bar. His faith began to grow. The neat part about it was I was hungry after that. There was a hunger in me to be in the Word, a hunger to see what God had for me. And I had I'd read so much of the Bible before, and I, and I knew what it said but I'd never taken it to heart that that's talking about me and my life. And when I read the Bible today, I try to look at it of exactly how it applies to my life. It took Matt some time to reshape his reputation with friends and family. Christy, a college acquaintance, remembered Matt from his wild days and wanted nothing to do with him. When it came down to and he asked me out, I said, no. You know, because I remembered, as he said earlier, how he was in college, and I didn't think he was husband material. Matt was relentless. Christy gave in, and the two dated long distance for several months. I was on the phone with him, and he told me about how the Holy Spirit just filled up that little room he was in at the rehab place, and I saw that his heart was truly different and that he was living for God, and in that moment, like, I, I just knew I would marry him. Two years after they married, Matt quit his job to work alongside Christy in full-time ministry. Matt inherited the family's musical genes, so he sings and plays with his wife while managing her career as a gospel singer. When um, Christy and I started traveling, and we very much felt God's will for us to go out and, and to let people see our hearts and what God had done in our lives, to, to hopefully 
uh, influence other people into letting go and accepting God's will in their lives. He is the God of new beginnings. Nothing is impossible for Him. His parents have told me over and over again. They say they just see such a difference in Him. And, and at first, you know, they were thanking me. I was like, no, it's not me. It's Jesus Christ. He's the one who did it. It's not hard to be a joyful Christian if you can rejoice in every aspect of your life, the good times and the bad, because God uses everything to His glory. As long as you're walking that path and as long as you are following Jesus, He will use everything that happens in your life for His glory. So there will be tough times, but rejoice in the fact that it is for His glory and He will use the bad for a good end.